Welcome to TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention. I'm your host, Paul Smith, and joining me is Ben Smith. Uh, thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you for joining us for this two-day event. We're going to be bringing you all the action on the Comic-Con floor, including guest interviews, uh, special uh, discussions with the folks here at Comic-Con, and much, much more. And TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention starts right now. Over the past 10 years, the Great Lakes Comic Convention has grown, and with that, longer lines. So, we sent Paul Smith out to talk to the folks in the line about what they're excited to do once they come into the event. Paul? All right, we're outside here at the Great Lakes Comic Convention, you know, waiting to go inside. We're here with Annie and Ken. So, what are you guys looking forward to do here today, Annie? Uh, well, we wanted to cosplay, like just like in general, and we don't have like, there's not a lot of conventions that happen between December and May, so like this was an opportunity for us to get into cosplay and come to a convention and look normal for once. And for you, do you feel the same way? Yeah, because there's nothing to do from, like after winter and it's too cold to wear like their fun cosplays, so it's good to come out and like have something to do for a little while. <laughs> Alright, so I know who you are, but tell the fans at home, who are you? I'm Sansa Stark from Game of Thrones. And you are? I'm Edelgard from Fire Emblem. All right, cool. Go inside and enjoy the Comic-Con. All right, we are now here with Lewis at the Great Lakes Comic Convention. Lewis, talk to me. What are you doing here today? What are you excited for? Toys. What kind of toys? Star Wars, Star Trek, your name, Moon. I'm here with John and Annabelle here today at the Great Lakes Comic Convention. So, John, first tell me, uh, what are you excited for here today? Uh, mostly to meet Daryl Banks. He's one of the Green Lantern illustrators. And Annabelle, what are you excited for here today? Coming with my dad to see the illustrator. Oh, that's perfect, because this is a family-friendly event here at the Great Lakes Comic Convention. Now go inside and enjoy the day. Still here outside the line at the Great Lakes Comic Convention, I'm here with George. George, what are you doing here today? What are you excited for? Oh, uh, I come to this convention every year. Uh, I'm a high school math teacher. Often I bring my students, but uh, this year I didn't get enough interest, so I came to take pictures and show my children when I get back to school Monday. Any, anything in particular you're trying to get pictures of? Uh, I'd like to meet Jim Starling, the creator of Thanos and, and uh, Captain Marvel. What are you excited to see here today? Uh, as a, we're going to see uh, the legend Jim Starenko. Always excited to see him. He's a fantastic character. Uh, great stories and stuff. So I'm excited to see him again and talk to him and hear what he has to say. All right, I'm here with Kevin all the way from Chicago here in Warren, Michigan. Kevin, why are you here today? It was well worth the trip. I'm here to see some comic creators and see what the latest comics are on the market and also check out some old stuff that I've been a big fan of. So. What are some of that old stuff you're looking for? The good old Silver Age DC and Marvels. So we are here with Thor, God of Thunder. Thor, what are you doing here today? I'm looking for my brother, Loki. Well, who do you think he's shape-shifting here today as? I don't know, but you need, need to be careful. He is adopted, so I can't be responsible for the things he does. Yeah, he is sneaky, so uh, keep, I'll keep a quick eye out, look for him too, and if I find him, I'll let you know. All right. That's it for me outside the line at the Great Lakes Comic Convention. Now it's time to go inside and enjoy the show. Coming up next on TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention, voice actress Katie Lee joins us on set. Turn up the flames. Catch all new episodes of Cooking with Fire with the Warren Fire Department. Each month, TV Warren will feature a member of the Warren Fire Department sharing their unique firehouse recipes. You won't want to miss their creative and delicious meals. Tune in to TV Warren to watch all new episodes of Cooking with Fire. So we just got a new intern this week, and it's been weird.
we're realizing that he's not much of a people person. I don't think it's going to work out. now joined with Katie Lee, a very popular and talented voice actor of shows like Darkwing Duck, Lego Star Wars, uh, Totally Spies. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us, Katie. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And look! I know, that's you. <laughs> that's I will you. not forget you. who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question, um, how early in life was it that you knew you had a, a voice like this that could, you know, be on television shows and or commercials or, you know, cartoon shows? Probably not till I graduated high school and people started saying, you sound like you're 12. Because <laughs> I didn't notice. I didn't pay any attention. So, yeah, about when I got older and they said, yeah. So you said, I was oblivious. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but you said, you know, you went to broadcasting school. Were you doing that kind of like you? that's when you realized you knew you had the voice to go with the broadcasting to combine the two? Or was it you had the love of broadcasting first and then that kind of followed after? Okay, that's a great question. Thank I you. do love broadcasting, but I started trying to do voiceover and I went to an audition. Oh, well, okay, let me back up. Yeah. I stopped going to college my junior year because I didn't know what I wanted to major in. Oh. So then I made a demo and started auditioning and I went to probably my first or second audition and the girl sitting across from me was auditioning me and I said, how did you get your job? And she said, oh, well, I have a degree in broadcasting. I was like, shut the front door, what? <laughs> you can get a degree in broadcasting? That's what, from where? And it was from San Francisco State. And I said, All right, okay, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember what the first job was where you booked it and you went, I made it. This this is me. That's, this is what I'm doing. Do you remember that? what that was um, and the experience? No, I, I don't think I felt like I made it till no. I got a series okay when I moved to LA after I graduated because they in that that time San Francisco you couldn't really do character voice work yeah and I was in San Francisco so they had to go back to LA where they do animation and I just said well I'll give myself two years if I can make a living after two years this is it if I can't oh well I better figure out you know get the classifieds out um, and so my First, well, my first commercial I actually booked with Rob Paulson. Oh, okay. I think, yeah, we were doing it for a department store, and he played my boyfriend. Yeah. Um, that was pretty fun. And um, probably the Dungeons and Dragons series. Well, well, we did a show before that where I was a star with Neil Ross called Pandemonium, which I'm sure nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> Uh, but we did one season of that, yeah. and that was promising. But then the second one, I, I think that's when you think, okay, this is really happening. Yeah, yeah. And that was Dungeons and Dragons. So it's going back a little bit. You were talking about your audition process a little bit. What is the typical process like for a voiceover audition? Because I imagine it's got to be a little different than you know being on camera or. Is it a little different? Well, you don't have to show your face. That is also true. <laughs> true, yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Um, nowadays, most auditions are done from home. When I started, mm. we'd go somewhere, but now they'll send you an email with a copy and you have your mic True. and you come up with maybe one, two or three different takes, mm -hmm. hopefully different for the character and you send it to your agent and then you don't even know if your agent sends it in. And then, so because I just found this out. I just assumed everybody listened to my auditions. But in fact, the casting directors will say, Get to the agent, send us your best five. Okay. So you don't even know if you make the cut. Right. And then it gets to them, and then if they listen or not. Gotcha. So that's kind of pretty much how it goes. But then if they like you, you might go in and actually meet face to face and do a callback. Okay, okay cool. cool, cool. So now you got that job. What's it like after that, fi really fine-tuning that character to exactly what the director wants? What like, do how mean? do you fine-tune that how voice? How do you so, do it? Yeah, so they, they hired you, and then they come in. Like, what's the process of really fine-tuning that voice to exactly what they're going for? You know what I mean? Well, if you're doing a series, 
it usually takes two or three episodes to, to really get a feel for what the characters like. And sometimes you do the pilot, and then they'll record. You know, that might be the first episode. Yeah. And when you come into the studio, if you're lucky enough these days to have the ensemble cast, they'll listen to see. Well, how does my voice sound with yours? If there's another female character, our, our voice is too close. Does somebody have to maybe change or pitch their voice up or pitch their voice down? And then once you do that, then, you know, the second script, you know, the writers kind of get a feel for how you interpret the character. And it's sort of a collab, a little dance. So yeah. it usually takes two. If you, if you watch any series, sure. sometimes they'll go back and re-record the first episode just because they it's want the exact voice evolved. They yeah. yeah. Other times, if you just listen, you'll say, oh, yeah, I see how that character's changed. No, that yeah. makes sense, because you say the pilot, I'm thinking of just one of my favorite shows, American Dad, with uh, Steve, the character, his voice was super deep, deep, and then the next episode was just this high pitch, almost like girl voice. So there was just such a difference between, like you said, they must say, oh, this voice must have clashed with someone else's voice, so let's change or it. Or they had a test audience who responded yeah. and they took it back to the people who think about things and they yeah. came back and said all right let's recast this or do it this way yeah. it's a work in progress yeah more with katie lee when tv warren's coverage of the great lakes comic convention returns Start a story. Adopt at the shelterpetproject.org. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What did I tell you guys about pillaging the truck? It's ridiculous. It's like the fourth time this week. Yeah, ridiculous. Come on. Welcome back to TV Awards coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention 2020. We are joined now once again with Katie Lee, a popular and very talented voice actress with work including Muppet Babies, Darkwing Duck, Totally Spies, Sailor Moon, I know that one, yep. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to watch that show all the time, but uh, she is here. So I'm curious, uh, you know, we are broadcasters, so we have to take care of our voices as well. We have to do all those things. What is a voice actor's, what's some of the things that you can't live without, you can't do your job without? In, in terms of preserving a voice, doing your job, are there things that you do to uh, make sure your voice is strong and it's it's powerful all throughout the season? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> lemon and honey, uh -huh. water, at least twice a day. Really? And then voice rest sometimes. But I mean, I imagine you're talking a lot more than I do at my job. So Rest is good. Yeah. Um, I actually, if I do get a sore throat, I like chop up garlic and ginger and I keep it in a jar of honey and get a teaspoon and add hot water to it. Um, I just started, I honestly, I've been doing this 40 years. Yeah. It's only the last couple of years I started really paying attention. Oh, okay. So doesn't mean you should all try this at home, yeah. but, um, throat coat tea is really helpful, but it's only if, you know, like some jobs, I just finished doing a three three days in a row of a character. I'm working on a show. I think I can say it's called. It's not out yet. Yeah. Uh, Time traveler Luke, and and I'm it's dubbed, and he's fighting all the time. So every episode, and we just do four hours straight, and he's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and you know, at the end of the day, Look, your voice yeah. is tired. Yeah. So by the third day, it felt a little rough. But honestly, I think in my experience, if you're working every day, you're like warmed up every day. Sure, if yeah. you're auditioning every day, you're warmed up. I mean, you can, you know, do that kind of thing to, you know, do your tongue twisters to warm up. Drinking warm water. I don't drink cold, cold anything. And really? I think it's. Probably just because I don't like it, oh, but yeah. I, I don't think it's good for you either. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, but there's no, 
you know what? You hurt your voice, you go home, you don't talk to anybody and hope you sound better the next yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So like you said, you've been doing this for over about 40 years. What are some of the changes to the business that have been for, in your opinion, the best and the worst? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I have like an hour to answer. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the worst part, I think, is that two things. One, a lot of times when we record, we recorded separately now. And I miss being with everybody. It's, you know, if you're doing a show and everybody's there, that's the best. Like play off one another almost. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot more for the actor, financially speaking, there's a lot more non-union work. So it's harder to make a living than it was when I started in the 80s. Um, it's very different. Cable, streaming, whole different way of getting paid. So I know a lot of people think all I want to do is be a voice actor and work in animation. It's not really easy to make a living. Yeah. that way if before if you had two or three shows on the air you were good for the year right mm -hmm. Makes um, sense. but yeah. not now yeah uh, those are the worst the good the good the good is yes the good we always want to hear good about the good is when I walked into the studio for the first time and saw a computer with the wave file digital and I was like that's it I can do stuff from home I can send my demo over the internet. We don't have to buy CDs and pay for labels and send stuff. Yeah. So that's awesome. And, and I really like audio production. Mm. I, I don't know if you know, I work on a radio show called Adventures in Odyssey. We've been on the air for 33 yeah. years. And I love audio. I love that. And I love editing. I loved editing when I did it with a razor blade, and I love editing when I do it on my computer. So I enjoy that. Yeah. Do you use Audacity? Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the one. That's I the do. One. That's my favorite. Yeah. Now they have punch and roll. Do you yeah, know that? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're Exciting geeking out. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know. Yeah. But we're geeking out about it for sure. Uh, I imagine one of the fun things is going to events like these, is, is going and meeting fans and stuff like that. But you know, when like a kid recognizes your voice or if you're in a group setting like that where you're promoting the show, what is that experience like when, you know, at least kids or even adults come to you and recognize your voice and say, it's you. It's really adults. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. It's humbling. It's heartwarming to come to these events because when I did a lot of these shows that you mentioned, you guys were five, six, seven, eight years yeah. old. You're not gonna, you know, hear me or see me, um, you know, but now when people are grown up and they come and they share their experience or how you were the voice of their childhood or they break into tears or they just want to hug and you, it's like so much love, it's, so much better than coming home and having your kids yell at you. I'll tell you that right now. But and I love my kids, but you know, it, it's it's you don't really you can't appreciate it till that passage of time. Yeah. I've only been recognized two or three times by okay. strangers. Yeah. Now that there's social media, you know. Yeah. I think once somebody recognized my face, but right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, because I changed my voice, you know, sure. Sunny Gummy sounds like this, Baby Rolf sounds like this. Right. Uh, everybody's, you <laughs> a little know. little different. Yeah. yeah. We've got, I got a character on the internet on a Legend Quest. And she sounds like this. So, you know, it's very different. Um, <laughs> they don't know. That's sweet. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. It. So that's fun. It's really funny. I'll tell you someone else's story about that sure. if you have time. Yeah. You know, Jess Harnell. Hmm. Not, well, not he's, he's voice of Wacko on the oh, okay. Animaniacs. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah and uh, I think he's Wacko. Yeah. Anyway, so he was in he was in line Orlando in Disneyland, and and the kid had a Animaniacs shirt, and he was with his mom. And the mom says, "I love this story because it's so funny." And the mom, because kids don't get it. That's why this is my point. So his mom says to Jess. Oh, kids are waiting, waiting. Just tell the little boy, you know, tell him that you do that voice, that, you know, that, that'll make him happy and just like, uh. so finally he goes, hey, you like, you know, Animaniacs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He goes, I do. I do his voice. And then he goes, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, like it like, doesn't Yelp. register. And then he goes that. like, then he was kind of butter. Like, no, I really do. And the yeah. kid's like, yeah, okay. All right, <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. So do I. Yeah. Oh, that's, fine. that's a great story. Thank that's you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so finally here, you know, you use your voice for your job, and we noticed that you do a lot of guest speakings and going to places and workshops. So what are you trying to accomplish when people have you come out to speak at their events and stuff like that? Well, I like to share my experience of, I mean, Bottom line is, if I'm asked to do a talk, I usually just share how I think God created you a certain way, and you have life experience, and you have skills, and just keep doing the things that you're inclined to do that draws your attention, and then one day you're going to see where those things intersect. You know, just hang in there. I mean, that's kind of like my message, you know, and when I coach, what I hope to do is just give people a little bit of insight into themselves and what else they can do and always, you know, raise them up a little to, to do something they didn't know they could do so that they're just a little bit better from having worked with me. I like directing. I've started directing, oh, too, oh, lately, cool. some nice. cartoons. Great. Watch Chi Chi Love on Kids YouTube. All right. Um, I directed it and also did a voice of one of the dogs. For that's pretty cool. Nice. Hey. That's awesome. Well, that's really inspiring. I never thought about the past intersecting like it's that. Like, you know? It's like algebra. It's like yeah. the X, what? Y, <laughs> axis. Yeah. So that's all I remember I guess it's geometry. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's like, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Katie, thank you so much for being on the show with us. It was such a pleasure to have you on with yeah. us. And thank you for being on our show. Yeah, we it's appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Bye. All right, we'll be right back with more coverage of TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention. Coming up next on TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention, Nick Candela with the Floor Report. I will be getting back to the Cineplex soon to give you more reviews. We have a great show lined up for you this time around. Hi, my name's Paul Smith, host of People, Parks, and Programs, right here on TV Warren. Tune in every month for our show, People, Parks, and Programs. I'll take you through all the upcoming activities that are taking place in the city of Warren every month. We'll give you all the latest updates from the Parks and Recreation Department, including how to sign up for things like exercise classes, sporting events, birthday parties, and much more. Whether it's winter, spring, summer, or fall, Warren Parks and Rec is a special event for all. So keep it tuned right here every month on TV Warren for people, parks, and programs. Each and every year, Paul, people come to this event to cosplay, whether they dress up as their favorite hero, their favorite villain, cartoon character, or an original creation of their own. Yeah, whatever it is, you know, we're looking out there on the Comic-Con floor to find them, and that's why we sent Nick Candela to see what they're wearing. Nick, take it away. All right, so, like Joan Rivers says, who are you wearing? I'm Lucio from Overwatch. Okay, and what made you get out of bed and decide, you know what, I'm going to go out to this convention and I'm going to be the best character I could possibly be. Why him? Okay, so um, I play Overwatch a lot and it's like one of my favorite games. Um, I don't main Lucio, but I like his personality and I love his character. And I, I look just like him. Like cosplay is not all about looking like, like looking exactly like the character. It's not about the body or the appearance. It's about how you love the character. And like, since I like Lucio, I thought I'd make Lucio and like a lot of people love my Lucio. And like, 
like just Lucio in general. He's just like one of my favorite people. I have his personality and like we can relate. Give us your best Lucio. Pose into the camera for us. So tell me a little bit about who you are dressed as and why you decided to dress up here for the comic convention this year. Well, I'm my Dungeons and Dragons character. Her name's Dara. Um, I'm an elf druid, so I can cast like really cool nature spells and stuff. And I, it was, coming here was kind of a spur of the moment thing, so I just got this out of the um, costume bin and put it on, and I'm actually really happy with it. Um, well, it looks awesome. I mean, there's a reason you. you caught my eye coming down there. I couldn't help but notice the ears. Tell me a little bit about, you know, obviously, like you said, you kind of went to the costume bin and threw it together, but tell me a little bit about the individual parts. What makes this character unique? Um, I feel like the cloak's a big part of it just because there's a lot of, like, sparkly, like, animal prints and there's some nature stuff in the constellations. It's really cool to me. It really stood out as my character. And um, the prints on my jack, uh, my shirt's also like animals and stuff. So I just felt it really fit the druid vibe. Like, you know, I can turn into an animal, might as well wear some animals, you know? <laughs> be one with the character. Yes, be one with the character. <laughs> So tell me who you're wearing today. This is Ant-Man from Marvel's Avengers. And tell me a little bit about the costume. Uh, was any of it made yourself? Was it store-bought? Uh, tell me kind of uh, why Ant-Man and why you decided to bring him out here this year. Well, I always loved Ant-Man as a kid. The, uh, the guys that made their own powers like him and, and Iron Man and Doctor Doom and... and uh, I've been around uh, the Comic Cons for a long time and I've got to know so many wonderful groups. Uh, I went ahead and joined the Ghostbusters. I joined the Finest as Cobra Commander because, well, Cobra's cool. And the Joes are, Joes are okay, but Cobra's cool. If it wasn't for Cobra, why would we need the Joes, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Necessary evil. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you talking with us. Can we get your best Ant-Man pose? So we have a couple more people here dressed up. Tell me who you are, like Joan Rivers, who are you wearing? <laughs> Bakugo from My Hero Academia, but it's a different version of it. Okay. I just threw this together really fast, so it's like an army version of him. He's on his day off. Oh, his day off. And day off. and what are you uh, dressed up as today? Um, L from Death Note. <laughs> So we're here with a couple more cosplayers at the Great Lakes Comic Convention. Tell me, who are you wearing? I am Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls. And what made you decide to dress up today and come to the convention? Um, <laughs> I actually don't know. I'm just here to have fun and cause chaos. And what do you like about the character? Because he's chaotic and evil. <laughs> Much like myself, I can relate. Yeah, Illuminati Dorito. Nah. Yeah. And then, of course, we have a bit of an elaborate costume here. You are literally wearing a house on your face. Explain. Yes, sir. So I am also from Gravity Falls. Uh, this is the Shaktron. <laughs> All right, so like Joan Rivers says, who are you wearing? Uh, so I'm a Predator based on the, the 80s uh, Predator movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And tell me a little bit about what goes in to make this. This is one of the most elaborate costumes at the convention this year. So I'm a cosplayer. I've been cosplaying, cosplaying since like 2009. Uh, this is made out of foam, as you can see in the back. It's an EVA foam. Most cosplayers use this. It's nice and light. It's durable. You just heat it up with a heat gun. And you can shape it, paint it, and and this is what I get. Very cool. Now tell me, you know, there are several varieties of Predator that we've seen, the cartoon, the comic book, the, you know, the 80s movie, the remake, Predator vs. Predator. Why did you select this version of Predator? I'm an, eight, I'm an 80s kid, so I, you know, I grew up watching the, you know, the original with Arnold. With Arnold. This is my interpretation of the, the original Predator from that movie. So 
Yeah, and this is all made out of foam too. It's made out of the same material, even the mask. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this latest episode of TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention. But all you fans out there, don't worry. We're going to be back with more guest interviews and more action from the Comic-Con floor. We'll see you next episode.